Hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of OneNote Worthy Life and in this video I'm going to show you how shared notebooks work in OneNote and then I'm going to show you an actual example of a shared notebook I used to run my recent online event called the OneNote Planner Creator Series. I'm filming in OneNote for Windows 10 so if your screen looks a little bit different than mine it might be because you're using a different device or version of OneNote. So first let's talk about shared notebooks. So in your OneNote account, you can have multiple notebooks. Um, by default, only you can see your notebook. However, you can share your notebook with one or more people if you want to. For each person you share with, you can specify whether that person has view or edit privileges for that notebook. Permission level, whether it's view or edit, applies to that entire notebook. And then finally, sharing is done at the notebook level. You can share a single notebook with a person but that doesn't share all of your notebooks with that person. Also, you can share a full notebook or not share it. There is no way to just share a section or a page of a notebook. The sharing feature works very similarly to the way it does in other programs, uh, things like Google Docs or whatever other programs you might share and work collaboratively with. Any person with edit privileges can update or make changes in the notebook, and the notebook will show the most updated version when it syncs, no matter who's viewing it or what device they're using. If two people are working at the same time on locations in the notebook that are very close to each other, you might have a minor problem with OneNote trying to figure out whose writing should show up, but generally it works pretty well. So the permissions work uh, kind of just how they sound. If you give someone view access, they can only view the contents of the notebook but not make changes. If you give them edit privileges, that allows the user to make changes to the notebook. You might want to grant edit privileges in a case where you have people who are peers collaborating on a project where everybody needs to add their part of the work to a common space. So you can also password protect a section. And this idea isn't strictly related to the idea of shared notebooks, but I wanted to mention it here because it may be useful when you're using shared notebooks. As I mentioned, you can give a person different privileges for different notebooks but you can't give a single person different privileges within the same notebook. In other words, you can't give them view privileges on some sections and then edit privileges on other sections. So one way to manage this could be to password protect your sections, and I'll show you how I use that feature when I get to the case study part of this video. But you can add a password to a section to keep people out who shouldn't see or shouldn't change the contents even if by accident. For example, maybe there's one section of your notebook that contains information relating to computer coding and only want the programmers to be able to make changes to that section simply because they are the only ones with the knowledge of that section. You could set a password on that section um, so that only the programmers could see it. Another example might be if you're working on a big event and you don't want everyone involved to have access to the budget or cost information. That information could be put in a section and password protected so that only people who need to see it can get to it. Oh, and on one final note, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but make sure you record your password. Very, very important. So I'm going to show you how to add a password. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm going to put a password or demo on this section called Flylady System. So I'm going to right click it and you see you get this section menu here. And we have some options that can be applied to the entire section and I'm going to click on password protect add password and then here you would enter your password and then confirm it and click OK. So I'm not going to actually do that right now. Again make sure you write down your password. So now I'm going to show you how to share a notebook. You can see on this page I have an arrow pointing to click on the share button in the upper right and when I hover my mouse you should see this dark uh, rectangle over the share button. So I'm going to click on share and it comes up uh, where you can type in the email address of the person you want to share with and you can say they can edit it or they can view it and then you just click share and they'll get an email with uh, the instructions they need to access your notebook. So now I'm going to move into the second part of this video where I show you how I used a shared notebook to manage my events. So the event was called the OneNote Planner Creator Series and it happened in the fall of 2020 and I had the creators of planners in OneNote show their planner for the year 2021. Each session was a live broadcast with me and the creator with audience participation. 
So it was a series of live streams with people who create planners in OneNote. The reason I wanted to do this series is because there are a lot of people who create digital planners in PDF format. And these planners work great in some other applications such as GoodNotes, but they don't work as well in OneNote. Creating a planner in OneNote, specifically for OneNote, allows you to have a lot more functionality and use some of the built-in features of OneNote in the planner. I felt like the idea of planners created specifically for OneNote was not well known, and I wanted to give people who create these planners and the people looking for them a way to find each other. So it definitely wasn't the most complicated event ever made, but it was the first time I ever created and produced an event, and I had to manage a lot of details for each of the five presenters. And the tool I used to do this was a OneNote shared notebook. So I want to give you some ideas on how I came up with using the shared notebook. Um, early on, as I started to gather details, I knew I would need a tool of some sort to help me manage everything. And I considered Microsoft Teams, but I decided against it. Um, number one, there was a learning curve for me. I'm not a regular Teams user, so I don't know a whole lot about it. I was also not sure everyone could get access. People have different ways they get to OneNote. Like some people might use just the free downloadable uh, versions. Other people might have it through a work account or some other personal Microsoft account where they don't have access to Teams. In this particular event, there was also no need for the creators to talk to each other. Like from their perspective, they were each just doing a live stream with me. Um, certainly, I would have accounted for that had they expressed an interest in that. But it was really just more about me live streaming one-on-one -on -one with each of these people. From So from their perspective, it wasn't a group thing. The final reason I decided against Teams was that it created a burden on the participants to check one more destination for incoming messages. I also considered Slack, which is a, also a team communication software, but I decided against it because it had similar downsides as Teams, and each person would have had to create a Slack account if they didn't have one. Um, then I kind of came to terms with the idea that part of me just wanted an excuse to play with a new tool. And I love to learn things. I love to master new skills. And I love learning new software and new tools and stuff. So this was very real. Like I, you know, had to come to terms with, okay, this is not the time to play with a new tool. I ended up choosing a shared notebook because everybody involved with this already had a OneNote account, already used OneNote. And I realized the shared notebook did what I needed it to do without me needing to learn a new tool either. Um, now I'm going to show you the actual notebook that I used for this event. So this is a, the notebook I used for the event, and this section up here, you can see there's no padlock because there is not a password on this. This section was for everyone to use. Um, I started with a page called Share he Start Here, and this is just a link to a video with information for the creators. I had an, an announcements page, which is as new things came up, I could just put it here. And this saved me from having to email each person individually. Like People knew they could just look here anytime they were in the notebook. Important dates. This was as deadlines were approaching or live streams were scheduled. I could put them here. Um, then I had this page for general live stream information. So this had um, the hashtags for the event. And then this was kind of the general outline that I used with each creator. I had a page called Michelle's Inbox, which was... Uh, just a place for people to ask questions or send me messages that they thought would be useful to everyone. And this was good because once I answered a question here, it was answered for everyone. Uh, I had a participant list just so that they could see each other if they wanted to. An FAQ page, um, and this I just added to each time a question came up, I added, added it here so that it was all in one place. And then finally, this um, I made a sample graphic. This was actually the graphic I ended up using for the event and I just replaced the other headshot with a headshot of the creator and then updated the details. The next section is um, what I'm calling the creator blank, and this is a section I created thinking that I could have one blank section, and as, as I needed pages for each creator, I could add it to here, and then when I added a person to the event, I could just copy it over and have a fully set up section for that person. So I think the idea was sound. I did not end up needing it as much as I needed. I'm going to go ahead and enter the password on this section. And so the first thing I put in here was contact information. And this was really valuable. Um, 
I had a generic form for contact information that had all the information I needed and when I copied this entire section to create a new section for each creator I knew I had this contact information and I thought I was going to add a checklist um, for the steps I had to go through with each person I ended up not doing that um, so I think the idea was sound it just didn't end up being as useful or necessary as I needed uh, so you saw how I unlocked this section. Now I'm going to show you how you lock it. I'm going to right click on the section name, go down to password protection, and I'm going to lock the section. You can also lock all the sections if I had more than one open, uh, change the password or remove it, but I'm going to lock it for now. So now I want to tell you uh, more about that little warning I gave earlier. If you're using passwords, make sure that you write them down in a secure place and maybe even in more than one place. If you lose your password, I have heard from several sources that you cannot retrieve it, not even from OneNote. So make sure you don't lose it. I've heard from a few Apple users that they've been able to unlock a section with a password using their fingerprint, but I wouldn't want to rely on that. So the lesson is to make sure you write your passwords down someplace safe and where you won't forget where you've written them down. So in conclusion, uh, I'm very happy with the way the shared notebook worked out for this event. It was robust enough to do everything I needed to, but nobody needed to learn a new tool or create a new logon for this. If I was running a bigger or more complicated event, I might need a more robust tool, like something like a project management tool or something like that, but I didn't for this. For myself, I learned not to confuse wanting to play with a new tool with actually needing a new tool to accomplish the job. And as I was assessing this, I was reminded of this quote from Albert Einstein that I love. Um, Everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. And I do think I hit that on this. Like, I don't know that I would have been as efficient if I had gone any simpler than a shared notebook, like exchanging emails or spreadsheets with people or whatever. So, um, this was a really helpful guidance for me um, to go as simple as possible, but no simpler, and certainly not more complex than you need. So that's it. That's how to use shared notebooks in OneNote and how I used a single shared notebook to run my fall 2020 event, uh, event called the OneNote Planner Creator Series. That'll be linked in the description as well as a live stream guest I had who talked about using shared notebooks for work. If you have any questions or you want more information on something, please leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to answer you. And if you like this video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up and please do subscribe because both of those things, the thumbs up and the subscribe, really help me out. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye!